Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I actually got requested on my previous video to do by Oceana to do a matte full coverage, long lasting makeup for oily people um, as she's got her sister's wedding, I believe, in a couple of weeks time. Um, so she wanted some inspiration for that. So that is what I'm going to do in today's video. So I really hope you all enjoy. And if you're interested, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm actually going to kick off with base and to start with I'm going to use the Milk Hydro Good Primer so so I think this is a really good primer for kind of long lasting makeup because it gives that nice hydration which is great because it makes makeup sit on the skin beautifully but what it does is it goes really tacky afterwards so actually it grips onto makeup not in a bad way but really kind of holds that makeup in place and just, I just think it helps really to help last the makeup for a long time. So you only need a pump of this and what I would say is you want to really work it mainly into the T-zone area as that's where kind of the oils come through and then work it out that way to the kind of outer perimeters of the face. Yeah, so i just got a pump like this and then I'm going to start working this, as I mentioned, right in this kind of T-zone area and then move it to the outer perimeters. Okay, so going on to foundation, so I'm going to take my Lily Lola Cream Foundation in cotton and I'm going to use this all over the skin and I'm going to build it up quite nicely just to create that full coverage look. Obviously the products I'm using, um, you use what you've got at home, like I said the Milk Hydro Good Primer I really do think it's a good primer, but in terms of foundation use what works for you and what's best for you, um, but yeah this is the one that I've got that I'm going to use. So just taking on a Real Techniques Expert Face Brush, I'm going to buff this all into the skin. Again, I'm going to start in the T-zone area and then work my way up because I feel like, well for me anyway, any redness is around this area and obviously I get blemishes on the T-zone area. <clears throat> Whereas the outer perimeter is, is kind of normal. So yeah, you just, so I'm starting in this middle section. So yeah, then I just work whatever's left on the brush kind of out to the perimeters of the face. I feel like it's been a while since I've worn foundation. I tend to just do concealer these days for an everyday look and I haven't really worn much foundation recently. Okay, so I think I've got pretty decent coverage going on. You can't really see any blemishes at the moment. Obviously under my eyes you can still see a little bit but I'm going to go with concealer. Um, but that's definitely, like I said, you can, with that cream foundation, you can really build it up nicely. Or you can just go in a light layer and just create like a nice fresh base as well, um, which is great. Um, I'm looking very kind of flat now that I've got a full coverage base on, but that's where the other products are going to come in and really help. Okay, for the concealer, I'm going to go in with the Kosas Concealer in 01. Now, if I did have, because I still haven't purchased the Hint Beauty Concealer yet, but if I had that one, I think I'd probably use that over this one, just because, um, like I said, this is a very hydrating concealer. It needs a lot of, it needs powder to set. I would even set the Hint Beauty concealer for long lasting, but I feel like the Hint Beauty in general gives a more long lasting effect. But I still haven't picked that up yet, so I am going to go in with this, but I'm just going to make sure I set well. So I'm just going to put this, like I said, kind of my chin area might be okay. I might just put a little bit here, but this is going to be mainly focused under my eyes, to be honest, with this. I'm just going to buff a small amount oh, onto that area just there. But like I said, I think actually that foundation is a really good job. Okay, I'm just actually going to use a sponge for buffing or blending in under the eyes. This is from, I think it's a sponge I've got off Beauty Bay. I think on that I'm going to go with another little layer just to give me that full coverage. But I am going to be going on with something on top, which will really help get that full coverage. Now, even though I'm trying to achieve a full coverage matte look, I still want everything to look nice on the skin um, and not cakey. So it's all about, I feel like with full coverage, going in small layers at a time and building up that way. Um, 
yeah, I just think it produces a more fresher, lighter appearance, even though you've got a bit more on the skin. Okay, for the under eye portion, I'm going to set actually using my Lily Lolo Mineral Concealer in Barely Beige. It's just going to give that little bit extra coverage and it's also just going to help set in place because it's a nice mineral kind of powder um, product. So I'm just taking it on my little setting brush. For the rest of the skin, I'm not going to do this. It's just for under the eyes, just to really kind of make sure I'm looking awake. So I'm just going to pat that in. And the key is to pat, not swipe with this. A, it'll give you more coverage, but also it'll just prevent any kind of movement under under the, the powder. Okay, and then for the rest of the skin, so I am gonna set the entire skin. For the T-zone area, I'm gonna stick with the setting brush because I find it, I can pick up a bit more product and really kind of pat it in. So for the oily areas, it's perfect. Then I'll go with a slightly fluffier brush just to do the perimeters of my skin. So 100% pure bamboo powder for this. I do actually need to get a new one of this because it's starting to, I'm coming to the end of this pot. So I'll start with the chin. And again, I'm using patting motions because A, it won't disrupt the foundation concealer underneath, but also it kind of really pushes the product into the skin, I think. Just helps set it a little bit more. Then as mentioned, going a slightly fluffier brush just to buff into the rest areas. I'm just gonna go in lightly and just do light circular motion. I feel like I haven't used powder products in such a long time as well because I'm more of like a a cream base everyday kind of person at the moment but definitely for long lasting I think powders are the way to go and you can always at the end I might give a little spritz just to kind of revive the skin okay so I'm gonna add some warmth to the skin now a little bit of definition so I'm going in with the Lily Lolo contour sculpt and contour kit um, using this side this is meant to be a contour shade but for my skin tone it's a little bit warm so i use it more as a bronzer that will still help give some a it'll give some warmth to the skin but and it will just slightly define the skin without contouring as well which i kind of prefer i'm not a huge contouring person anyway so i'm just taking a little angled brush i'm gonna tap it off on the back of my hand so i haven't got too much i'm gonna start working it into the skin starting with like kind of the cheek bone area just with the kind of perimeters to begin with um because i'm going to mainly focus the blush down here this is just going to add some nice warmth to the skin and i'm going to take up and around i guess a little bit just bring it down the neck slightly. I kind of like to bring this down here, the, the bronzer. Just because as I feel like there's too much of like a, a line. I just feel help it connect everything up a little bit. So I'm in half the face and you can already see that's just given some slight warmth to the skin. A little bit of definition, a lot less flat than this side, which is great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side okay so I almost very went in I, I almost went in with highlighter then and then I remembered you said you wanted a matte full coverage look so I put the highlighter down um, so I'm gonna go in with blush instead so this is the coral peach blush from Lily Lolo I think this kind of tone suits all eye looks all all kind of styles so I really like this blusher I'm using the same brush that I used my bronzer with I'm just going to tap onto the cheeks. That's the base done for now. I may come back later, like I said, but I'm going to go in with eyebrows next. I'm taking my ABH palette, 
going in with the Auburn shade here. I'm just filling them out the way I usually do. So kind of do your brows in the style that you like and suits you. Because um, I find brows tend to last. Um, unless you're using really creamy pomade. But then I'll just go in with some brow gel. But if I'm using powder, I don't find I have a problem at all. Okay, so then I'm going to go in with my Lily Lola Eye Primer. You want some kind of base, whether it be a primer or a concealer. Just add that extra kind of layer. It's going to help the eyeshadows grip. If you suffer from really oily eyelids, I would definitely recommend setting whatever base you're using. Like I said, primer or concealer, I would go ahead and set as well. I find I don't need to with this one. My eyelids aren't too oily. But like I said, if you do... I would set everything. So yeah, just going with the little eye primer. I'm just going to take a sponge to apply to my eyes. And also for this one, because it's got a slight bit of colour to it and coverage, it just kind of does more of a blank canvas, which I think is great. And especially as I've got kind of freckles on my lids, which I don't mind at all, but when I'm doing eyeshadow look, especially this one here, Sometimes it can look like from a distance I haven't blended properly. And so in fact, it's just this little pesky fresco, fresco, freckle peeking through. Okay, so on to the actual eyeshadow. I'm going to keep it very soft. No, I'm going to add some glam to it. But I want to keep it very elegant and um, a little bit summery, I guess, as it's coming into summer and a couple of weeks' time. I don't know what it's like where you are in terms of weather, Oceana. But I'm just going to add yeah, a little bit of nice... Um, warmth to the eyes I think and just something really pretty um so it's up to you again use whatever eyeshadow palette you've got at home I'm not going to focus too much on the product I'm using more like kind of the shades and the techniques um because I am going in my sources palette which I seem to do quite a lot although I feel like recently I haven't so it's a good excuse to get it out again um I'm going to go in with this kind of more mid-toned brown I'm going to take it on a very fluffy brush this is the Luxy tapered blending brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this. Make sure I tap off because these are very pigmented. I'm gonna start buffing this onto the outer portion. I need a proper mirror. So I'm just using this fluffy brush. I'm using circular motions. Focusing mainly on the lid portion on the outer section, but then I'm going to buff, slowly buff upwards. And actually, as I go up, I put less pressure on the brush. Um, I will go in with another shade just to fully blend, but for now this is kind of what I'm doing. So nice circular motions, more pressure when I'm on the lower lid, and then just lighten the pressure so it gives a softer blend the further up I go. And I am going to wink out because that is kind of my style. Okay, so I'm going to go in with like a lighter, more my skin tone type shade. Just to then further blend out the edges. Still using the same fluffy brush. You want a fluffy brush to do this. And then you just want to find a shade that matches kind of your skin tone. Just to make sure you're happy with the blend on these outer portions. So I'm taking actually a shading brush for this next one. It's something a bit more denser. It's going to pick up more product and therefore it's going to lay down more pigment, more colour. So I'm going to go with a darker shade now from that one, a nice dark brown. Again, tap off. I'm going to lay this down on the outer portion of the lid. So starting right from the outer corner and then dragging inwards but also down as well. Almost like you would with a wing, if you're doing wing liner. So just pop it on the outer corner and dragging it in and down as well. I just think it gives some nice definition to the outer portion. Back in with the original fluffy brush. And just kind of go over that and soften these edges. may need to pick up some of the first shade we used just to really help further the blend but right now I'm just going to go in with what's left on the brush what I'm going to do is actually go in with a bit more and I'm going to bring it a little bit higher up 
on the outer portion and then again drag it down and in. So I just want a bit more deepness, a bit higher up. And then going back in with a fluffy brush just to blend. Now I'm going to pick up some more of that original shade just to help it melt together. And then go back in the really light shade and just go over that as well. What I'm actually going to do is take that really light kind of skin tone shade. Obviously when I'm saying skin tone, I mean it matches kind of more my skin tone. Obviously if you've got deeper skin tones, use in a shadow that kind of matches your skin tone. And then I'm going to take that and just buff that over the slid. And also kind of into that. It's just going to create a nice seamless gradient. So for this look, the focus is going to be more on the outer portion. I just find defining the lash line and the outer portion suits most eyes, so I think it's a really kind of good one to go for. I'm going to go with a slightly kind of deeper shade again, but on a pencil brush this time. I'm going to redefine the lash line on the outer portion, and I'm also going to start dragging it along the lower lash line too. So start by, like I said, taking it along the upper lash line. Again, using a pencil brush because it's smaller, it's more dense, it's going to pick up more product and kind of really lay that product down. I'm not going to take it all the way across. I just think if you take it three quarters of the way, I'll use another shade to kind of blend and smooth that in, like a gradient effect again. But just really focusing on the outer portion of the eyes, I think it's really pretty. And like I said, I do think it suits a lot of eye shapes, just to redefine the outer portion. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to do the other eye. So I'm going to pick that lighter shade up that I use on the lid. And I'm just going to buff it just here. It's going to help smooth and create a gradient. So mascara, I'm going to go in my Ilia Limitless Mascara. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to really load up my lashes, but I'm really going to focus on the outer portion again, just to give that really nice definition around the outer portion. So I've done a layer, and now I'm just going to build up on this outer portion. Just to really, yeah, get that impact. Okay, so that's the eyes done, and I really, really do like them. Um, I think they're really pretty. So I'm moving on to finally lips. So I'm going with a nice nude. I think it's a perfect kind of classic one to go for. I'll start off with my Benacos brown lip liner. I really need to get myself a new one because this is just very much running out. I'm going to fill the whole lips in with the lip liner. It is an extra layer underneath the lipstick for a bit more of a long lasting look. So I'm going to go with a matte lipstick. I'm going to take the Hansen Pure um, lipstick in Sandstone. It's just a nice nude. I'm going to pop this onto the lips. Now lips will be kind of, if you're eating and drinking, I guess lips is going to be the first thing that will start to fade. What you could do to begin with is, so I would take your lipstick along and just top up, but a little trick you could do is set the lips ever so slightly. So I'm just going to take a little bit of powder on an eyeshadow brush and just gently dab. With lips, I always do find you're going to need to top up if you're eating and drinking. It's just, unless you're going to go in with a liquid lipstick, which I'm not a huge fan of anymore because I just find them quite drying on the lips, then yeah, I would just take the lipstick along and just top up as you go. 
Okay, and so here is the completed matte, full coverage, long lasting makeup look for a wedding. So I really hope Oceana you liked that and found it helpful with some of the kind of tips and tricks I was giving along the way. Um, but yeah, I really like the eyes in particular actually with the definition around the outer portion. Um, so yeah, I really do hope you enjoyed it. Please keep your requests coming down below. I've got some fun ideas coming up with a bit more colourful makeup soon. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Oh, before I go, I just remembered I've got this. Um, my friend is a florist and she started her own little business and she does subscription services for flowers, bouquets, things. And actually she's made me a little flower crown, which Although, if you're a wedding guest, I don't know if this quite works. If you're a bridesmaid, that's different. But I'm just going to put this on because I quite like it. But, so, I've actually... So, she's going to do me, instead of like a bouquet every month, do me a little flower crown. So, I thought it might be quite fun to kind of do each month a look. It's based on a little flower crown, just something a little bit different. So yeah, so I'll leave her Instagram down below, but I just thought, although if you're just a wedding guest, I probably wouldn't wear this, but I just thought actually, if you're a bridesmaid um, and you want to wear this makeup, then this could work quite nicely, or even a bride. If you're kind of going for that more boho themed wedding, this would be really pretty as well. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you because I really like it. So I really hope you enjoy and thank you so much for watching.